Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. <laughs> yeah, we gon' yeah. talk, we gon' have fun. <laughs> we be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Be, be. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Maker. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day I walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, you name it, we're on it. Let me tell y'all. Y'all see us on the street and talk about y'all want to support us all the time. This is how you can support us. Go ahead and buy our membership on YouTube. How you do so is under each and every video. Take this time to do so. Here in the description section, there's a link that says join our membership. Click that link, follow all the instructions. You get a lot of exclusive content that way. Stuff that has not been out in over a year, but it's content people have been telling us, man, where is that? Where is that? That's where it's at in the membership section. Thank you in advance, and we love you. Man, check it, man. Hey, man, I'm down here in Miami, man. And guess what? I done crept up on a jewel. I didn't really creep up on We had plans, nigga. But we here, man. This guy don't really like, he don't, just not a forefront dude. But I couldn't come down here to Miami. We just, listen, we had one of the spots down here in Miami. Stop playing, man. King Noah is in the building, and he's not playing no games, man. And thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done for Boss Talk 101. Hey. Feelings are mutual. Man, you just, just like I say, man, a ray of sunshine when it come down to what we do and who we are, man. Like I said, I, I always can talk to you and have me a great interview when it come down to God and everything else that represents family. It, I always tell everybody the most gangster thing you can do is be a guy who take care of family and kids, bro. It's more gangster than anything. Yeah, it is. Definitely that, you know. He definitely calls some of the, some of the people that you consider in this time was gangsters like Paul, you know? That's right. So, of course, uh, I feel that being, you know, gangster is taking care of your family, making sure that your loved ones are protected and covering your family. Wow. So that's gangster to me. Man, I mean, you've seen so many different things coming into this whole, uh, you know, the entertainment game. You know, you've seen so much, man, and some of the things that you see you know, you see people leaving and coming. Some of them will never be back again. You also see some of them being locked up and everything else, you know. Um, like, uh, how do you keep a, a cool mindset when you're dealing with it? To be honest with you, you know, it starts at the home with me. So I have a special um, special person next to me that is always keeping me covered. And Because it, be honest with you, sometimes it can get difficult being you know, dealing with in the entertainment world because a lot of things is for show and for the camera. And I'm just totally opposite. I don't do stuff for show. I do it for from the heart, out of love. And so sometimes when you're doing stuff out of love, it actually can hurt. And uh, when you're being hurting, sometimes you get in the rooms and you just have to let it out. And everybody, when you being the king and being always the one to cover everyone, sometimes you need to be covered. So that special person to me, is always keeping me covered when days I feel like I can't take another. I'm finna run away, I'm finna be done, I'm done with people. But uh, when I realized that I couldn't have that, that uh, I couldn't have that, my special special friend that's next to me is always telling me that uh, let's keep going, let's pray, you know, and that's, that's what helped me. Wow, I think your, your, your main thing you gotta understand, King Noah, is that, you know, you, you, um, inspire a lot of people man and a lot of people that I've talked to the things that you've done the movies everything that you've been accomplishing what's the next thing what's up what's happening next what's the next movie uh I actually really want to say it but um <laughs> you can't talk about it because I had to sign uh what's it called an NDA? NDA. Yeah, NDA I had to sign an NDA um my sister made me sign it so I really can't really discuss it and so uh, <laughs> I love you, sis. That's eight queens. So I, she literally made me, say, you know, Lord sent over some stuff for me. Saying, <laughs> but it's it's some very major, and it's it's gonna touch the world. Wow. You know, when I say touch the world, it's gonna touch the world. Man, I just want to ask you, like, you 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 definitely been fun. ever since I met you. The Cash Money movement was one that you 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 streamlined real close. Uh, Birdman and Slim, them going back home and getting street named after them here recently when we was all down there. How big was that for you and just seeing that happen? Um, like I said, you know, Slim is my OG and my uh, my right hand man is a uh, family to them. And so uh, when I seen that happen, 
it always give me inspiration. You know, I, uh, you know, I look for them for the, to, for guidance because I'm younger than them and I'm trying to, uh, I ain't gonna say, uh, do what they did because what they did is uh, is bigger than uh, than I seen anybody do. They the biggest and doing it and they did it really from their heart. They helped people. I man, they, man, you'd be surprised what the William brothers do. Them William brothers do so much stuff that uh, I I really feel like the world should know. Because Man. sometimes that people try to paint pictures that's not true. So I'm cash money for the rest of my life. It's uh it's in me, it's in my heart. It's tatted on me. I don't even have seven kings tatted on me. Wow. I got cash money tatted on me. Wow, man. And that's dope, man. Like, um, when you got that tattoo, how long ago was that? What was the thoughts behind it when you done it? What made you what what made you do it and and even put it in the place that you put it in? Um, the reason the reason why I did that was because when you look, do the research of Cash Money and the artists and the people they touch, so so big, they all have it tatted from Wayne to Jizzle to Juvie, uh, they got it, and so I'm I'm a Cash Money, I'm a hot boy, yeah yeah to the heart, uh, and uh, when I say that it's for real, wow. You know? Wow, man, like um, the the thing you look at, just the whole movement when they first started coming up. I got one thing, even before people even, you know, sometimes you got to show them it's real, you know, it's it's right there. Right there, there it is. And, and what's up under? It's a cross. It's a cross right yeah, up under. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right there. And you know? how, how many years did you go, did you get it? Uh, I just got it last year. Okay, so you got yeah, it. And I, you, and I, was, I was signed I, to the Cat Money Records with GSO Fat for a uh, Three, it was two years ago. Two years ago. I, it was always in my heart. It was always in your heart. heart. Yeah. Wow. And and so, where's Fat at? Fat is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, everywhere. Yeah, GSO, he actually called me, uh, talked about you. He's in, um, he was having family day today. Okay, all right. That's yeah, good, man. Yeah, family day. Yeah, so when you think about just, um, just, the whole Essence Festival, seeing Birdman come out there, seeing BG back on stage for the first time in many, many years, uh, Juvie out there, Manny Fresh out there, Lil Wayne even out there. Like, what was your thoughts when you were seeing the show? Uh, so, uh, I had never personally seen it, so it was the first time ever for me to ever see it. And uh, so, you know, when, when Birdman get that call, everybody come, you know, the ones that the one, the, the ones. So he made the call. Everybody from his team, you know, reached out to certain people, and and so he said, "Hey, man, you come there." So I actually came there. I even brought merch there for the family, and you know, BG had the merch on and high board them. You know, it, it it was good because I just wanted to be in the atmosphere of some of the people that I consider role models to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, man, you and Slim, man, Slim don't even talk much. How do you get Slim to even talk? <laughs> it depends which it depend on which phone he'll answer. And um you know, he keep it very short and simple. Uh but you know, the times I talk to Slim, it's really been on, on a spiritual connection. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing about business or nothing like that. It just really is like a, a love. You know, like just a love. Wow. That's hard, man. Like you you one of those guys, like I said, I've seen you in those rooms, man. Even when it comes down to uh Larry Hoover Jr the whole Hoover family, like, what is the thing that motivated you, and how did you guys become so closely knitted? It, with that situation, that's family. You know, I, I could consider that, like, like when they say blood, uh, the old man uh, used to say, like, blood is make your family, make your kin, but loyalty, make mm -hmm. your family. And so, in that situation, uh, Miss Wendy, which is uh, Larry, Larry Sr., wife, uh, I'm, I'm like like a son to her because uh, my mutual was through Dunny, Dunny Jenkins. It's her oldest son, and uh, that's who I love. So by me loving him, made me love the Hoover family because he is a part of the Hoover family. Wow. And uh, in that situation, and you know, how I met him, it's, you know, it's kind of confidential, but it was it's it's that because it's, he's somebody that you got to love. Wow. And he, and he he loves like that. He try to love everybody, 
but himself. He tried to help everybody, and so and I seen I seen a part of me, and he came a part of my life at a time when I really needed a friend that would listen, just have an ear and listen. And so he was just a he was just a he was just an ear to listen for me. He was just an ear to listen to me. Wow. When you think about just just Larry uh, Hoover Senior, who has this this uh, parole hearing. Uh, this this day coming up, where a hearing coming up, um, what do you? What would you like to see happen in that? It's not up to me what I like to see, because at the end of the day, uh, I feel like whatever going on, uh, the good man, uh, the good man above handle all situation, and uh, so I don't. You know what I would love to see is Larry Jr. and Miss Hoover. You know, just better touch. You know her husband, his father, because you doesn't don't know how they can impact people. Just imagine people growing up uh, not having a daddy, but imagine growing up not physically having your daddy, but know your daddy. So that that hurt can go so many different ways, and physically being married with somebody, but physically can't touch them. So I don't never. I just always pray because I just thank God that I was never in that situation, and I just try to be a support system to them. I don't even like to tell people about my relationship with wow. them because, you know, um, that's a praying relationship that I pray for every every night. Wow. It's not a day that I don't go by and ask God to protect them and, and cover them and help them to uh, re reunite some type of way with their husband and their father. Wow, because he's been on maximum security for thirty over 30 some years. Yes. Long time. And that means being locked down and not being able to have contact, physical contact and visitation. Yes. It's a long time. Long time, man. Yeah. Man, so um also, man, just to just to move over and pre eventually a little bit, you live in sometime in Houston. I know you got a lot of spots, but yeah. being in that Houston, uh, in Texas, seeing the way those guys are moving, when they come down to J Prince and they come down to the people who've been dealing with the rap music there, all of the artists is from Trader Truth, Kiki, uh, all these boys down there, Propane, man, Slim Thug, like, um, you know, uh, DJ Chose. Yeah. Uh, we all are a litany of people down there, but to see B King pass away was a big, big, uh, big punch in my chest because I, I talked to him and, and really, really had, had liked the way that he moved. Mm -hmm. um, how tough was it? How's the atmosphere down in Houston just being, in, being down there? Well, you know, that, that was, he was a big figure to the city. He had, I call it, he had you know, his foot on the ground. And so when you got your foot on the ground, I mean, you mixing and mingling and you shaking hands with everybody. So that means he built a personal relationship with a lot of influencers, a lot of artists, a lot of CEOs, a lot of people. So be keen to everybody. So everybody down there is taking that pretty hard. Taking it pretty hard. Yeah, it's taking it pretty hard. And, and you can see that he had two uh, younger daughters. They keep showing that picture on uh, Instagram. Um and on, on Facebook, like, and it, every time I see it, it just it just blows my mind to see how young they are, but to see how big of an influence that daddy had, and, and for them to have to now live in the shadow of that. Like, um, they're going to need God to be able to keep going. And he said on my show that, you know, he taught them about God. Yeah, that's what a man's supposed, a real man's supposed to do, is protect and lead their family to the most high. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then, like I said, man, just dope dude, man. R.I.P. to B. King. Um, just yeah, just a dope dude. And, uh, man, gone too soon. You yeah. know, but every, everything God do, he's aligning something. It's ordained. Yeah. There's no there's no way around it. When he got his hands on it, there's no way around it. It's ordained. Wow. I just want to also just say, as I spoke on those all those rappers, like uh, just the atmosphere, the music, the 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 way that you see music today, who do you see out there that you you most impressed with as far as the artists uh, go? Well, you, you know, I, I I couldn't be, I couldn't sit up here and say I, I'm not rooting for Propane. That's my boy. Yeah, you know, so that's a that's a guy that's my, my partner, my business partner. That's a person that uh, we collaborate, and I just dropped a new, I just dropped my first time dropping a, an uh, album a compilation. Yeah, Seven Kings compilation. Wow. And so Propane kind of quarterbacked me from behind the scene, putting it together, you know. 
uh, and uh, TJ Fox, <coughs> you know, they helped me put that together, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, so uh, it's like it's like real deep to my heart because I put years, time, and finance into this relationships, building relationships from people from all over the world. I got the West Coast vibe, I got the East Coast vibe, I got the dirty South, I got I got Midwest, I got somebody from every every neck of the woods because I believe in each one teach one. So I took somebody from every every parts of the United States and and put them on on the album. Wow, that's huge. That's big. Um, how did man? Because you you always when I talk to you, it's always it's something that I know that everybody that's around you is there's a link and there's a spiritual you know foundation being built. Like when you first got your call in to deal with entertainment, like you do, and deal with these people like you do. Like, was it confusing or you knew exactly what you were doing when you got um, into this game? When I got into the entertainment, I didn't get into it to make money. I don't want nobody to even think that was the reason why because it take a lot in the entertainment business to to uh, be very, very successful. And it depends what do you consider successful from which I, you know, and I, I always come from the third eye. Mm. And so my success come from helping people save their lives, saving souls. So you might not see me all over the world or in that, in this and that, but if I can reach back and help someone get close to a higher power and help them see see what their their role is, whether it's discipleship or, or being, you know, something that, that God trying to use them for, I feel like I, I, I won. I feel like I, I that's to me, that's getting a plaque. That's, that's getting a plaque and a plaque. That's it. That's definitely getting a plaque and a plaque. And, and so, uh, anybody in this, in this business can tell you that, you know, one thing about me, you want to get them hard, just start talking about God. We can be going there to discuss the business, and I'm supposed to get 60 40. If you just start talking about the good man above, I change. I might, I might want to come from 60 40. I might be 10, you get 90. Man, because you love God and you know already he's the reason for the well, season. See, yeah. And so that ain't happened plenty of times. It ain't nothing else. Hey, to the point that GSO facts, I always say, when we go to meetings, look, Unc, you cannot go in this meeting because these people know. If they start talking about God, we went from making money to not making no money. <laughs> <laughs> so he don't like the meeting for me. <laughs> so he know you, you know you, you going to give it up for God. <laughs> yeah, he, he don't like the meeting for me to talk. People call him all the time. I need to talk, let me talk to uh, uh, King Noah. In fact, like, what you want? They can tell him I got a money play for him. He is not going to call. He's not going to tell me. He is sometimes, he wing out people. <laughs> he don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. What, um, like, like, like I said, like, when you listen to this music, when you see drill music and you see kids going to people's graves and all that and they go stand over these graves or you see them, you know, with these, you know, switches standing at these enemies' graves, like, what do you take on that? It take a lot for me to say this on the camera now, uh, because the industry I feel like is corrupt. Okay. So you know, and I'm a part of the industry. Mm -hmm. So I have to really treat how I communicate that question. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> I do have a family. Yeah. <laughs> and the only reason I ask you that is because I know already that a lot of times, and when you look at some of these the the, the labels and stuff, a lot of this stuff is coerced. A lot of these people are Definitely. rooting for that 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 moment where people can sell records or take over the waves when it comes to streaming. Uh, you know, this is the thing that you have to be careful on. I just seen uh, Young and Ace and Fulio and that whole situation down here in, in you know Florida, uh, a little different from where we're yeah. now, but still, you know, like that way that that whole thing streamed off, and then all them kids got arrested, man. That dividing the way the devil, you know, won in that situation, uh, was crazy to me. Yeah. But it was so obvious. And, and you know what? Shout out to Young and Nice because that actually was the first person that GSO Fat did a feature for. Him. Really? Yeah, yeah. Called Mask On. You uh, know, that, that was Ace before he blew up. That was Ace on on the on the on the path to go. So I had my hands on Ace too, from a spiritual perspective. Wow. You know, he said on my um, on my island in my kitchen. You know, like young A stay in Houston. He do. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, he stay in Houston. He when they, all that stuff went on. 
He wasn't even there. His, his mom wanted him out of there. And somehow he wound up in Houston. Wow. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I met him. Real good friend, been in my house, sit on the island. Even even help with credit. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. So you know, and Ace had his, he 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 wanted a man, and you know, God got his hands on Ace. Wow. What? Okay, and and you know, like I said, I just hate to see the way the corruption of and how the devil. Because I don't blame the people, man. Yeah. It's spiritual warfare for me, and Definitely. I know it. Definitely. So I know that's what what is, divide and conquer. Yeah. If you can find a way to separate divide, then you can conquer yeah. them. You know. Yeah. yeah. Because you gotta understand, we as a as a nation, and when I say a nation, people of black and brown. Mm-hmm. And I I don't I don't say you know what well, you African. No, I said black and brown. That's a nation. You could be Mexican, you brown, you part of a part of that nation, but. You can't be in between if you're white. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But black and brown, you in between. That's real. So I, that's a nation, nation of people. Mm. And you know, and so I really feel like when they trying to conquer that nation, because black and brown are all together. Yeah. The only thing that separates you can't be half white, half brown. You white if you mm-hmm. white. If you black, you brown. You in between. You can be so many different. Variations. That's Variations. right. So that's why when people say a nation of people, it ain't just people from Africa. It's black and brown. Wow. I, you know, when I look at where you from, being from Mississippi, but you linked up, how far is New Orleans from, 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 from where well, you live well, in Natchez? Well, well, from Natchez where I was born and where my roots started. And uh, it's where it all started for me and my sister, you know, playing. And um, that's from New Orleans, like, I think like two hours, two and a half hours. Did you ever think playing with your sister long back then that you were, long time ago back then, that you would be linked up with White Birdman and No, she, 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 Slim. you know, I ain't never put this on camera because she always told me don't because she do business with stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, but uh, me and her, I almost got to fighting behind Birdman. Really? Yeah, because she was such a little Wayne. Fan, fan, <laughs> and you know all the stuff. Folks, the hoorah, yeah, yeah. So you know, and she didn't know, she didn't know at the time the entertainment world that uh, I used to, you know, like, hey, I'm a cash money boy. Yeah, I come from that same cloth. So you know, I ain't never going against. I was always, I always <laughs> been a cash money boy. You know, and uh, and I stand on that wholeheartedly. You know, I was about to fight my sister about it when I was in high school. Day. Yeah, that's why so I knew him. So I think you can speak life into something. And so I, I never, even, I never wanted to do music or entertainment. I never had a passion for that. And so you gotta understand, I read. So when you really read as an entrepreneur, it tells you little things about you know going into the entertainment business. It can be some of the biggest and worst uh, investment. And so when you read enough, you know you start to see, and then you know. My first meeting to even understand about entertainment before I even started the company was with Jay Prince. Man, you know, so how was that meeting? Uh, it was knowledgeable. You know, that's a legend. Somebody I looked up to. Somebody I had patterned myself out there. So you know, uh, you know, I took pieces from every different from every different people I feel that was leaders. Wow, you know. It's something, man. You Mississippi, man. You think about Mississippi. You think about Big Crit. You think about uh, uh, David Banner. You think about uh, it's a litany of them. Um, even when you think about the producer, uh, was in the Heartbeats. There's a lot of people from over there. It was, it was, a, it was a bunch of people from uh, Mississippi, uh, man. Chris, Christopher, uh, what's, this, what's the R&B single? Christopher, uh, Christopher Columbia. No. Mm-mm. Christopher, I know who you're talking about, but I can't. He from Mississippi. Yeah, uh, I think it's like he was in the Al Be Sure Day. And really? Was, yeah, Christopher. It's Christopher son. Williams. Christopher Williams. Yeah, I ain't know he from Mississippi. Yeah, he from Mississippi. They say Snoop Dogg got roots in Mississippi. Yeah, yeah he a more he a Pike County McCall Snoop. See what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that link with Mississippi, man. My boy Smoke Brand, B down there. Brandy. Brandy Link, yeah, they got yeah, some ties yeah, down there. Uh, and uh, what's up, brother? Um, 
Ray J? Ray J, all them, yeah. Mississippi. Yeah, his mom, dad, from that way. They got Roots there. Yeah. Man, Mississippi, them, man, they don't, they don't have a lot of runs, man. Yeah, I heard you mention Smoke D. Yeah, I know Smoke. Yeah, D. I know. Yeah, you know Smoke D. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. that's my boy. Yeah. Smoke D, that's one family. of them. Yeah, he one of them ones for me. Like he yeah. come on my show, we talk about God, saying yeah. we, we yeah. it's something about God. Like yeah. we always tell, we have some deep conversations, yeah. man. And he out of that Mississippi. What's that other little boy that he sent to me? Uh, a little rap, the, the little producer. Producer guy. Yeah. I'm, what was his name? I remember. I met Smoke Z through through Jay. You did? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. how I know him uh, through Jay. Old oh, man. See, yeah, that, I met him through Jay. Uh, one year, uh, we was having you know Jay do a front, not fundraise. He does a uh, give back drive. To yeah, the yeah, yeah. He always doing something for and, the uh, people. And so, uh, Smoke D was down here with him, and so of course. I'm from Mississippi. He from Mississippi, and, and and Mr. Hoover is from Mississippi. Yeah. So he was down there giving you no know, the Chicago family was helping Jay, and so we were like, okay, it's the Mississippi family. You from Mississippi? He from Mississippi, and so that's how I met him. That's hard. I like that, man. That's crazy, man. Like that's the whole game, man. Bringing bringing good dudes together. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's what that's where it all that's where the rubber meets the road, man. Yeah, I did. And, and you, when you think about these young people, man, and the way that the streaming is, and the way that the money is, when it come down to the streaming, you 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 know, four thousand uh, dollars. I mean, four thousand dollars for a million streams. Um, you know, basically, a lot of time people are complaining. Snoop said it wasn't really, you know, generating what it's supposed to generate. Um, what do you think about how to advance in music today? I feel like it's a, it's gonna be a stink. Wow. Yeah, I, I think music is uh is going is going away. Wow. So I think what you're doing and Mr. Jamaica doing, you know, is uh is where everything going. Wow. Yeah, I think it's going it's going into how music can go away. People still love music. The music changes moods. It changes, cha- but I, I when I say it's think, I feel like for the eye, public eye, money, finance, it's gonna always be there. But the professionalism of it, anytime you can, it's okay to put a video about killing people and going that way. That's 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 that that that, that can ruin a nation. Mm-hmm. You know, we talking about killing. We talking about, you know, uh, I, and now I think what they doing. This is this is how I feel like it's so bad now. Is they making our ladies think it's okay to to be you know like it's. It, to sell sex and sell all this, you know, stuff that's not right. So we already know it. You should know where it's going with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you gotta know where it's going to. Wow. It's, it's going. It's going to a way mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. I feel like if we, you know, men going. I hate to say it like this, but when we go to concerts, if a woman calls us and say, "Hey, Chris Brown in town," we gonna buy a ticket. But if Chris Brown in town and nobody ever call us and say nothing, we just say, oh, Chris Brown in town. So when you try to destroy a nation, if you can get to that nation through a female, I promise you, that's the way to go. So that's why we have a lot of women in music now. Just pay attention. You go with any label. Labels are trying to sign women now. That's right. And independent labels such as me, they people trying to convince you, go get a female. Wow. Don't get a female. Do get female. Get female because if you can, you you can persuade anybody to follow a female. Anybody. Wow. Especially if you use sex to sell. Mm-hmm. That dang female. That that enticement is something else. Yeah. Because they can use it, and it can be something that can be bad, or it can be good. Yeah. Hey, that's been since the beginning of time. Uh, you know, it go back to King, uh, which one, King David? Yeah. You know, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. What about um, when you think about just uh, moving forward, like, would you like to see, have, will you be working with any females? I actually have uh, two females, one in the developmental stage, and one is uh, from Florida that I work with. And so, uh, so I I will, but when I work with her, I'm not. Uh, when we did our little introduction, 
And uh, her, her name was Mookie the Menace. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I like to ask people why she say her, her was Mookie the Menace because she ran away when she was in high school. Yeah. And went on pretty much like a high speed chase or something with the police. And then uh, the judge had seen it was like a second time seeing the judge in juvenile court. And she said, you just a menace. And she took on the name Mooka the Menace. So when I when I had her, her and my daughter was at the house, I told her, I said, huh, we're going to have to change that name, though. That's she, right. She said, that's Mooka the Menace. I said, yeah, but we're going to change that. What y'all come up with? I really, truly don't know because she still want Mooka the Menace. And, I'm, and I just told her, I don't know, whenever I, she really sent me something, say, hey, you know what, I'm going with this. We're going to change to this. And then we're going to do this. And now, like, okay, now I know, okay, let's go to the next room, next phase. Because being being an entertainment, you you got to lead people. You want people to follow you. And I don't want people going around following you and, and want to be a, on high speed chases and stuff. So I want to rewrite that narrative of Mookie the Menace. Wow. I got to ask this. So since you've been dealing with a lot of different artists, especially because some of them are young artists, mm -hmm. um, and since I've been diving in, I've been seeing certain trends. How can you keep a young artist away from the drugs, the bad influence, all of that? You 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 can't keep them away from it. It's a part of the culture. You gotta teach them how to operate in it. Mm. That's it. You can't you can't you can't do it. You, you can't keep them. I just like being you know a daddy and you have two girls. One day she gonna want to fornicate. With, with somebody, right. that's the worst thing in the world. Man, my even though it was a man, we do it. We be like, man, I can't even picture my daughter doing that. I couldn't keep her away. Mm -hmm. I can't keep her, keep her away. And I, and I had to tell my sister that because you know my one of my, my daughter's pregnant. You know what I'm wow. saying? My baby. You know, so I'll be I'll be less than a man to make you think. Oh, I can't, I can't keep my daughter from that. So you can't definitely keep somebody that want to be on drugs with. You gotta teach them how to operate. In it. But it's crazy because when you think about how many young people have passed away from all those drugs, you know, whether it be fentanyl or o opium or overdosing just on anything, and you would think that they were like, okay, well, let me stay away from this because I'm seeing all my fellow artists or I'm seeing all of this happening. That's, that's, you're talking about somebody that, uh, that have a, a rational mind of thinking, and a lot of times people have been so lost. They don't have the the, uh, the mindset because they've been such in darkness. They don't have a mindset. So they're using the music to escape in the music. I ain't gonna say they escaping because I feel like they use the, the music for of uh, it, it's kind of like it's, it's it's enhancing the negative. Mm -hmm. It go back from beginning of time, you know, like uh, it went from people being called prayer dance to you know just to now that you know everything is you know uh, they say the man you know that was Lucifer was a, was was good in that in that world mm -hmm. singing to the crowd making people dance making people do enticing that enticing them yes so you know all, all, all we doing in this in this life is it's a repeated it's, it's, it's given to us in a book there's nothing new under the sun <laughs> yeah so you just got to, you know, be two steps ahead or have somebody in your corner that can prepare you and give you their day experience mm -hmm. and day intelligence and hope that they receive it. And if they mm -hmm. don't see you, pray for them mm -hmm. and let God help them receive it. Mm. Wow. Let's talk about the seven. Like, you wear the sevens and they, they, they bling, bling, bow, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like you wear the seven and you have the crown on the seven. Let's break down this jury for these guys who, <laughs> who really, you know, they want to understand what the seven represent. Seven <laughs> Kings guys in the <laughs> building. Stop playing. Hey, um, if you know, you know, that's number one. <laughs> and uh, cause you know where I come from, you know, where I stand on, I stand on, I stand on, I stand on that. And number two is I, it was God. It's completion. You know, a lot of people sometimes say seven days, you're supposed to rest on, on Sunday, but that's not actually true. So I really don't like to do nothing on Saturdays. That's my day with the good man above. Mm. You know, and uh, and on the sixth day, it's completion. 
which is something. It was complete. Everything he did, you know, you know, if you go back in and ask him, you know, how the world was created, it's just, just study, research. How do, how can someone get some merch if they want to wear Seven Kings? It's Seven Kings, uh, shoot. <laughs> Man, that's what Cleo <laughs> <laughs> uh, is. It yeah. seven, is it is it a website? Yeah, it's a website. I just can't seven remember. King. It. No, it's Merch Seven hey. King Merch. That's TJ and you know I keep telling TJ you know, they supposed to be on there. I put that on. It's seven. It's a uh, Seven King Merch spelled out S E V N. Yeah. Merch dot com. Wow. Um. What you got? All right. We going What one thing I want to I want to make sure is to. Uh, if it's a kid out there that's trying to, and I'm gonna get you off here, but if it's a kid out there that's trying to get into the game, and they see people like you who can invest in them and stuff, what's the best option for them if they're trying to link with somebody? Give them a, give them a, a pointer. Best thing is you have to keep on working, and hope that that work pays off and connect you to somebody that's connected to the industry. Yeah, and it's because you know it's it's a relationship built driven, relationship driven. Everything about it is relationship driven. And so if uh, you meet somebody that got a relationship with that person, that person got a relationship with that person, and then they, they help you connect and move up, up up the ladder. Hope that they don't try to charge you all type of money, you know, and stuff like that, because that's what I experienced in the beginning. Paying people, uh, cons the word is consultant, paying these consultants that who ain't never had a relationship in the first in the first place, it, it was a, a ball relationship. Man, so they never even had a relationship with with people, mm. and they and they probably can't never log into their bank account and show they got a wire from Universal or Republic or Atlanta Records or Motown or nothing. And so, but they giving you all advice. And so, what I learned through through the uh, through the industry that you deal with so many snakes, and some of those snakes you got to go through and get bit. You just hope to keep going to come out of it and just keep going. And eventually they'll see you. Well, you know? when you when you really really know what's going on, man, and you know what your mission is, man, it's it's the seven and the completion is real because mm -hmm. you know where you at. There's a lot of people that's lost that need a helping hand, and you've seen things because God allow you to see them. Yeah. So I have to ask you, like, um, what do you, what is what is your main goal? What is the thing that you want to come from this whole? the whole movement of the Seven Kings movement. The number is completion, and like I said, what do you think is, okay, you have an eye to see, like I said, people going through stuff. It's not easy to do what you're doing, having to try to talk to people, talk them off the ledge sometimes, just to be, you know, pretty much able to give them a confident word when another person might not be able to reach them. Um, two questions, how, how how long are you planning on doing this, and what's your what's your end goal? You know, we kind of had this discussion, me and Cleo, the other the other day. Um, I think if it was up to her, she would have me today It'd be the last day. But it's my calling because you go in a room full of darkness, and just because they're in darkness doesn't mean they want God. It, he he had to have a certain person that they can walk into that room. Knowing that it's killers, drug dealers, prostitutions, people at their lowest, lowest, lowest. It takes a certain type of person can kind of reach back and go in that room. And I feel when you're in the entertainment room, you 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 mix with every type of demonic spirit you can. And so I'm that light. So I'm going to die doing this. Wow. Crowns 12, my boy LD300 put that, that album out. It's a real nice album. Him and Propane got to work together on there as well, yeah. man. How big is it to see? I know we you met LD yeah. on, on my set, like, and we be, me and you be grown and we've yeah. grown. Um, how good is it to see these youngsters come back together? I call them youngsters because they're younger yeah. than me. You know what I mean? Man, you know, you got to have no but respect for LD. That's the big homie. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and Propane is, uh, he's the GOAT. Yeah. Propane's the person that uh, he can call up anybody in Texas, not just Houston, anybody in Texas, and they're going to jump with Propane. He know how to uh, make you like him. Yeah, yeah. He knows that boy. His mama taught him that good. That's <laughs> what he did. Well, I just like I said, I know you. I know you watch all these guys yeah. like myself and root for them yeah. and want to see them. You know, just knock it out the park. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and they stand on family as well. Man, Those hey, guys are dope. Hey, ball for ball, hey, Al, Al won the best. <laughs> 
Yeah, he got substance. It's it's different, yeah. ain't it? Yeah, it, it is. Both of them. Pro two, pro two. Oh, that that jam yeah. hard, yeah. man. I'm probably gonna, we gonna put that thing on in a minute, yeah. man. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it, it, and vibe on out to it, man. Yeah. I got it on replay. Yeah. That whole crowd's twelve, man. And I listen to. Uh, I talked to Propane the other day. I'm a big fan. Just of him as a person, bro. Yeah. You right. He make you like love him as yeah. a person. person. Yeah. Like you don't want to see nothing go wrong with yeah. that guy, man. I was having a bad day the other day, and uh. He called me up and said, uh, uh, listen, just cut everybody off. Just 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 go to Miami. Get away. Wow. He had, I think he had just came back from Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I talked to him when he was in Spain. <laughs> and, uh, I talked to him when he was out the country for yeah. sure. And he was like, uh, man, just go go to Miami. Man, I was used to having a nice spot there and I don't never go. Go to Miami. Man, and shout out to shout out to you, man. Like I said, I, I, you you put me in there with with propane D Rec a lot of these people man that's my OG D-Rec. yeah yeah that's a lot of these people you put me in the room with these people and 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 Larry Hoover Jr. man and it's just been some promising relationships yeah. some great times man we spend I, I always think back to you bro I don't think I don't know oh, I'm, like, yeah. I'm very grateful yeah. to everything that you've yeah. done when it comes to Boss mm-hmm. Talk One Hundred One and I just want you to know this about I don't I don't even do this for the people to say thank you. It just now. I get it. I get it. But if a real a real one gonna acknowledge the acknowledge truth, it, man. Yeah. The truth will set you free of saying eight thirty two a joke. Hey, he he woke me up this morning. I got it. And gave me an opportunity to keep another day with my family. Man. That's what that's where it come from. But just like I said, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I know already we're going to do this over and over again as long as I got breath in my body, man. Thank you so much. And uh, how can people get a hold of you? (laughs) Not that time yet. But you you can follow me on all Seven Kings, ENT, Instagram, Facebook, all social media platforms. But actually getting in in contact with me. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> well, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. We love you, brother. Yeah. It's been love another too. great segment. A yeah. boss talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we have. Man.